Most unemployment and other figures dealing with the U.S. labor market come from the current population survey, which is collected by the government. The analysis I'm discussing today is based on that survey. The figures from the April survey were released last week, and this week the actual data was posted online. Now, immigrants, who are also referred to as the foreign-born, are identified in the data, but the government doesn't provide much information on them. Uh, I should add that, yes, illegal immigrants are included in the data. Most research suggests about 90% are captured in the current population survey and other surveys of this kind collected by the government. In an effort to get a better picture of what is going on in the labor market, myself and my co-authors, Jason Richwine and Karen Ziegler, downloaded the data and ran our own numbers. Now, among the things we found based on our analysis is that immigrants have been somewhat harder hit by the COVID shutdown than the native born. The unemployment rate for immigrants jumped to 16.4% in April compared to 14% for the native born. The number of unemployed natives has increased by about 250%, while the number of unemployed immigrants has increased about 320%. So both groups were hit hard, but proportionally the number of immigrants out of work went up more than the number of natives. Now, when we dig a little deeper into the data, we find the situation for newly arrived immigrants is particularly bad. The survey asked immigrants when they came to America, and we found that for those who came in, 19, in 2018 or later, the unemployment rate was 18%. For new arrivals who did not have a college education, the unemployment rate was an astonishing 23%. Now, these numbers have important policy implications. The very high unemployment rate for new immigrants suggests that any new immigrants we allow into the country in the future will likely struggle to find work like the new arrivals right now. Now, some employers are still arguing that while the overall unemployment rate may indeed be high, in their particular sector of the economy, there is a desperate shortage of workers. However, we did a lot of analysis of occupations, and the data that's available doesn't really show any kind of labor shortage, no matter where you look in the U.S. economy, including in sectors where employers are pushing to bring in ever more workers. For example, in the top occupations filled by H-2B workers, a visa program the Trump administration is considering actually expanding, the April unemployment rates were all very high. It was 18% for landscapers and trimmers, 21% for construction laborers, 9% for meat and food processing workers, and 35% for cooks and chefs. Even turning to the healthcare sector, where there is legislation pending to increase the number of workers allowed in, unemployment has uh, grown significantly, and the number working has also declined a great deal. In the broad category of healthcare practitioners, which includes both doctors and nurses, the number of people with a job declined by 750,000 just, uh, just between March and April. If we look at healthcare support, which includes jobs like you know, home healthcare aid and nursing assistant, the number employed declined by nearly 800,000, and the unemployment rate for those who are healthcare support workers is now almost 13%. All of the available evidence indicates there is no shortage of workers pretty much anywhere in the US economy, at least right now. Now, one other point. We did estimate the unemployment rate uh, for illegal immigrants based on demographic characteristics. We roughly estimated that their unemployment rate was 19%, compared to about 16% for legal immigrants, and about 14% for the native born. Before COVID-19 hit, we were allowing in 1 million permanent immigrants each year, all of whom are allowed to work, and the State Department was issuing about 900,000 temporary work visas to foreign uh, guest workers. Now, in addition, about 1.9 million work permits each year were issued within the United States to foreign students, 
unapproved green card applicants, asylum seekers, and other categories. If, after the economy recovers, we wish to continue to allow in this many immigrants, or maybe even more, then we can have that debate at that time. But for now, it is very hard to justify continuing to admit so many foreign workers, let alone increasing the numbers, have some have suggested. Thank you.